Welcome back again. This is Robert Glick with comicbooks.ie. Uh, again, thanks to everyone that's with, with their comments and all that kind of stuff. Uh, what I want to cover now is something that has is becoming more and more popular in Ireland. We are way behind the times here as far as this is concerned, but to slab or not to slab a comic book. Uh, there are many factors. First of all, because it is so expensive since we live here in Ireland, uh, it, I use FedEx to get to Sarasota, Florida for CGC. There are three major companies out there that will actually slab a book. And all that means is you send in a raw book such as this to CGC, PGX, CPCS, any company basically. I use CGC for my customers. Uh, you literally send them a raw book like this. They will determine the condition of the book. Uh, and then they will literally encapsulate it with an inner lining, which has all this information with its grade, who did the cover, the relevance of the book, like this one says, origin and first full appearance of Venom, Eddie Brock in parentheses, Fang appearance, last black costume. Uh, David Michelin, Michelini story, Todd McFar McFarlane cover and art, came out in April, uh, May of 88, and it's Amazing Spider-Man th number 300 in 9.6, which is near min plus condition. Okay. So, I've had to go up on the price. I used to charge 50 euro, but now because the euro is close to the dollar, I've had to go, on up, go up to 60. Really, I should be up to 75, but I don't want to charge that much at 60 euro. What that includes is me pre-screening your book for free because I'm not going to have you pay 60 euro and get a book in lower than 9.4 condition unless you have sentimental reasons for getting the book graded. Then if condition doesn't matter, then that's fine, obviously. But generally speaking, the whole point of slabbing a book, as I've explained about maintaining condition in previous vlogs, this guarantees the condition to be the same basically forever. Now over here we actually have a box full of slab books. Uh, I, developed my, I developed my own scientific method of grading books. I spent literally thousands of euro submitting to CGC. I used to overgrade. I thought I'd have 9.6s and they came back 9.2s. Uh, and obviously that's not good. But I developed my own method, and now it is extremely rare for a book to come back lower than what I expected. Uh, there have been, there was one instance where I thought a book was 9.6, it came back a 9.4, but then when I examined it, I had actually missed a little bend that didn't break color on the bottom right-hand corner. And all I do when I check corners is I just glance, make sure it's sharp, and obviously I missed that. Uh, the majority of the time, uh, I'd say more than 50% of the time, the book actually comes back higher than I've put. As an example, if I think a book could be either 9.6 or 9.8, uh, last time I submitted, I had six of those. Four of them came back 9.8, the other two 9.6. But on that same uh, submission, I had two books that were 9.6s come back 9.8. I didn't even put a slash 9.8. So again, I don't know how CGC grades, uh, but I do guarantee if you buy a book from me anyway, uh, I, and you want to get it slabbed, so you pay for the book, you pay for the slabbing, I guarantee the book will come back within a point two, or I will refund all your money without hesitation. Uh, now, I just want to show you all a few books that are very good books right now. Uh, this, I'm sure most of y'all would recognize, it's Batman The Dark Knight Returns number four. Uh, this is when Batman fights Superman, and we've seen Batman's armor exactly as Frank Miller drew it from this book. So this is one of the hottest books out there right now. This is actually one I had slabbed years ago. So anyway, uh, this is a good example of a book that you want to slab. Now. First and foremost, it is the book. Keep in mind, you can have a perfect looking book and it could be a 9.8 and you think, oh, I want to get the slab. You can have a 9.8 of a book that is worth nothing and it's still worth nothing even though it's 9.8. Uh, 
Uh, so I'll give you my professional opinion and it'd be completely up to you whether or not you want to get slapped, okay? Uh, here's a good example of a book I probably would not recommend slabbing only because you could, for, for the 60 quid, and plus I would char be charging about 80 for this book, for 140, it, it's not a book necessarily that would be a good investment because it, it, it just... Now, if you want to get a slap, I would not. I'd give you my opinion and then let you go from there. Now, here's a book I bought on my own uh, simply because, obviously, Deadpool will always be and always has been a popular character. Uh, and I thought this was kind of cute. Uh, kidsy books are really popular right now. Uh, the reason I got this is because there are only 10 in existence. It says artist proof four of 10 and it's a slab 9.8. So there's no telling what the other 10 are if they were even slab. But I, this was a book I just wanted for my own personal collection. And keep in mind guys that I am a collector first, business person second. So there are some books that I may have overly priced on purpose because I really don't want to get rid of them. And that's me as a collector. Uh, here is something very important uh, for me to go over. Signatures. Uh, every convention, not my own, but any major convention like Dublin Comic Con, that was a uh, weekend before last. Uh, we've got MCM coming up at the RDS. They are going to have some people that are going to charge for signatures. Uh, what I would highly recommend doing is do not have them sign an expensive or valuable book. And the reason for that is you've watched them sign the book. You know the signature is authentic. However, if you ever go to sell that book, you're not going to be able to prove it. Even if you have a certificate of authenticity, think about how easy it would be to laser print a signature on a book and create your own certificate of authenticity. Okay? That's where this yellow signature series comes in. I've been approved through CGC to witness signatures at conventions. Now, the convention sponsor, they have to allow it. At uh, Dublin Comic Con, it was uh, the runner of the show allowed me to do it, but unfortunately, no one requested. Uh, so if you ha want to get your books authenticated, it's 80 euro total to get this slab uh, unless it's an older book uh, and we will actually watch the person sign the book and submit it to CGC and what you want to do in those cases is get me the books that you want to have signed or potentially signed I will pre-screen it so you get a 9.6 or 9.8 or at least the highest grade possible and let you decide whether or not you want to get it signed keep in mind that is only to get it slabbed the and the authentication authentication which this yellow signature series normally if it's not signed it'll be a blue 9.8 but in this case it is a signature series signed by Greg Capolo and Scott Snyder and this was done on usually gives a date on I can't see that on September 8th, 2012 is what this says. Now, and you guys, I'm sure, know how popular Batman New 52 is. This is also the first appearance of Court of Owls, which should be over here. Uh, but because it was done shortly, it was graded, actually slabbed shortly after New 52 came out. New, new one slab would actually have that information. And Court of Owls is rumored to be in the next trilogy at some point of Batman. So this book has been has actually grown in value uh, in the last few months. Okay, Civil War. We know all about Captain America and Civil War and Iron Man versus Captain America and all that kind of stuff. This was a book I bought a while back just because number two was always my favorite issue because this was the official comic book that was uh, Spider-Man unmasked himself and Peter Parker was re revealed as Spider-Man. Now the reason this is such a significant book here is this is actually the 1 in 75 sketch variant of Michael Turner 
who unfortunately uh, he passed several years back. He was an outstanding artist and extremely popular with all his work. Another signature series. Most of y'all that are into comics will recognize this is Saga number one. This was is basically the current Walking Dead. Now, the print run was not quite as low, but it was about double The Walking Dead. Uh, but this series continues uh, to do extremely well. The stories apparently are... Now, I've never read any... I haven't read any of these, but I've heard really good things. And again, uh, the print runs keep on getting higher and higher because the interest... It get gained so much interest. And because of that, uh, number one is highly collectible. But this was actually signed by the artist and the writer both Brian Vaughn and Fiona Staples. Uh, and it was authenticated. This was witnessed by a CGC representative, which is why it gets the yellow label. Now, the reason I want to mention this, I had a gentleman a few years back bring me a Batman number one. I think the first few issues were one in 200 sketch variants. Uh, he brought it to me, and unfortunately... Of all his books, he brought me like maybe 10 of them. I graded them all, and the only one I would have submitted to CGC would have been the one in 200 variant. Uh, but at DICE several years ago, we had Greg Capolo and Scott Snyder here in Dundrum, and he had the book signed by both of them. And they do Batman, by the way. Uh, they actually did this book here. Uh, unfortunately, because there was no CGC representative there, he devalued that book astronomically, unfortunately. And As again, I said authentication. I want to do a little plug here in Dundrum. Uh, the, it's Big Bang, and they've just literally changed, moved to a different location in Dundrum Shopping Center. Uh, the guy's name is John at the, and, and then Bruno uh, they, uh, and JP. They are wonderful guys. And again, they are one of the three Dublin comic stores that have been supportive of me since day one. So I just want to give them a little plug and thank you and all that kind of stuff. And John gets unbelievable people. He got at Greg Kaplan and Scott Snyder at Dice a few years ago. I did attend Dice year last year. He's doing a monthly or quarterly thing with various artists coming to a shop and that kind of thing. Uh, so anyway, I just want to do a little plug there. Uh, another great book is Avengers 55. This is the first full appearance of Ultron. We all hopefully all seen Avengers 2 uh, Age of Ultron. Uh, I was very excited when I got I actually bought this book uh, years ago and had it re-slapped through CGC. Uh, and years ago it didn't have the information about Ultron and obviously now it does. And my pride and joy, the book that attracts attention all over when it comes to conventions, is The Killing Joke. Uh, most of you would have heard recently in the last month or so that they are, DC are doing a movie based on The Killing Joke. So this book and any book that re relates to it has gone extremely high in value. Now... The scale of grades go from a 0.5 up to a 10.0. Just notice the 10.0 on the top left corner there. That, that is why this is my pride and joy. Uh, and there are like 12, 13 print, printings. Just to give a little history of this book. Uh, this was done in 1988, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, 1988. Uh, and it was supposed to be a, just a one-shot standalone story. Uh, Joker winds up shooting and doing a uh, paralyzing Barbara Gordon, who's Batgirl, and does all kinds of unspeakable things to Barbara and her dad, James Gordon, who we all know about. Uh, it was such a popular story, DC made it part of the mainstream continuity. Uh, Barbara Gordon's paralyzed. She goes through all kinds of depression and when she gets picks herself up she becomes a popular char character called uh, Oracle and most of y'all would know that Oracle's first appearance is actually 